This surgical video features a posterior total hip replacement. This patient has osteoarthritis, or wear and tear arthritis of the hip, causing pain, stiffness, and decreased range of motion, which has persisted despite efforts to control symptoms with non-operative means. The operation is performed in an operating room with the patient under general or spinal anesthesia. The incision line is drawn approximately 10 centimeters in length. A skin incision is made and retractors are placed to assist with deeper dissection. An electrocautery pen is used to incise tissue and coagulate small bleeding vessels. A larger retractor protects muscles and connective tissues and assists with deeper exposure. Next, the joint capsule of the hip is incised and preserved, exposing the ball and socket of the hip joint. Stitches are placed in the capsule to help retract and preserve tissue. To help restore hip stability, the capsule will be repaired at the end of the surgery. A pin is placed into the pelvic bone. This pin will be used as a reference point to determine appropriate hip position during hip reconstruction. The anatomic position of the hip is measured. This will serve as a reference measurement during hip reconstruction. The hip is ready to be dislocated. With flexion and rotation of the leg, the hip is dislocated exposing the head of the femur, or thigh bone. The hip joint's arthritic ball and socket are exposed. A line is drawn where the head and neck of the femur will be cut. A power saw is used to make the cut. The painful arthritic ball is now removed. Inspection of the femoral head reveals cartilage loss, spurring, and deformity seen in hip arthritis. Retractors are now placed around the pelvis to expose the acetabulum, or hip socket. The cartilage rim around the socket is called the labrum. This is carefully removed. The socket is fully exposed and ready to be reamed. Specially designed reamers are used to remove the painful arthritic surface of the socket. These reamers are used in progressively larger sizes until a tight fit is achieved within the socket. After the socket is prepared, the metallic cup is ready to be press fit into place. The cup is impacted and secured in place. 
The exterior of the cup is porous, allowing an ingrowth of bone to secure the cup. An alignment guide is placed and used to ensure proper alignment of the cup. The smooth plastic polyethylene liner is clicked into the metal cup. The plastic liner will later articulate with the new head of the femur. A new set of retractors are used to expose the femur. A hand reamer is used to enter the inner canal of the femur. Next, a series of power reamers are used to progressively enlarge the canal until a tight fit is achieved. This process removes the contents of the canal allowing space for an implant to be placed. Preparation of the canal is complete. An appropriately sized femoral stem is selected by inserting trial implants into the canal. Progressively larger trial implants are used until a tight fit is achieved. The trial implant is fitted with a trial head and neck. The trial head and neck are available in varying sizes, allowing the surgeon to customize the fit for each patient. The hip is evaluated to determine if the trial implant is an appropriate fit. Hip length is measured using the previously placed reference pin. Hip stability is verified with an examination of hip motion. The hip is dislocated and the trial implant is removed. The permanent femoral stem is now impacted into place. The stem is coated with a porous surface to allow fixation of the prosthesis with an ingrowth of bone.
The femoral head component is being cleaned and dried before placing the femoral head or ball. The head of the component, or ball, is impacted onto the stem. In this case, the ball is metallic with an oxinium surface. The hip is reduced into its final position. The ball now articulates with the liner of the socket. A closure is performed of all soft tissue layers beginning with the hip capsule. A removable drain tube is placed to drain postoperative bleeding. The remainder of the tissue layers are meticulously closed. At the conclusion of the surgery, sterile dressings are placed. The patient will wake up and be transferred out of the operating room for recovery.